All right. So today we start the first lesson of the statistical process control or SPC. Okay. In this lesson, we talk about the basic concepts of country charts. We talk about the elements of a country chart. Uh, we talk about the in control and our control. And we also, uh, when finally, we talk about the rational sub uh, when collecting data for a country chart. So let's get started. A wheels play a major role in car cars handling capability on the road. Uh, manufacturers of car wheels need to make sure that the wheels manufacturing process is stable and consistent over time. Uh, for example, consider the ABC company. They make 16 inch diameter car wheels by a casting process on assembly uh, on an assembly line. Um, many factors contribute to variation in this process, uh, such as the pressure at which the metal was brought into the mold and the temperature of the metal when it was removed from the mold. Uh, due to the natural variation in the process, each wheel rim diameter can differ slightly. To study wheel manufacturing process, we can collect real rim diameter data at specific times throughout the day and plot this data on a time series plot. Uh, in chapter 1, we use time series plots to discover time related patterns in data. The time series plots of real rim, the time series plots of real rim diameter data suggest that there is some variation in the process. So is this variation natural to the process or is there something unusual going on? We can answer this question by expanding on the time series plot to create a country chart. As its name suggests, a country chart helps us determine if a process is in statistical control. That is, the process is stable and does not exhibit unpredictable variation over time. <clears throat> a stable process is one in which the sources of variation are consistent over time. The wheel rim diameter measurements can vary due to materials, operators, or any variable that naturally occurs in the process. We call this common cause variation. A country chart plus the results of a process over time against three reference lines, a center line, an upper control limit, and a lower control limit. These lines have calculated from the data and reflect the central tendency and the spread of the measurement data. To illustrate, let's collect wheel rim diameter data from the wheel manufacturing and use these data to create a country chart. First, we sample wheels from the process, measure, uh, measure, measure their wheel rim diameter and plot them in a time order series. Next, we add a center line. This may be based on no, no known values or standards, or it can be compute, computed, or it can be computed from the data. For the real rim diameter data, we'll draw the center line at the mean of the data. Next, we add a control limit. The control limit that represents the normal amount of variation we would expect to see if the process is consistent over time. Uh, these are calculated using the variation of our data and are often referred to as sigma level. Typically, uh, the upper control limit is three sigma limits above the center line, and the lower control limit is three sigma sigma limit below the center line. We use three sigma limits because they provide us with effective bounds that can indicate when there are unusual sources of variation affecting a process. 
when points fall outside this range, it indicates that there is excessive variation in the process. Before we use a control chart to assess the stability of the wheel manufacturing process, we need to know what it means for a process to be in or out of control. So what exactly the difference between in control and an out of control process? When a process is in control, the process data for on a control chart like this. The points are randomly distributed around the center line with, uh, with all points falling within the control limit. An out of control process is affected by something unusual, uh, such as equipment problems, an incorrect adjustment, or changes in raw material. This will result in unpredictable variation in the measurement data. We call this assignable cost variation. Assignable cost variation is also called special cost variation. A contract chart will show us if the real manufacturing process is in or out of control. Test for special causes identify assignable cost variation on a contract chart. The most common test indicates whether any points are outside of the control limit. Uh, in Minitab, this is test number one. This chart shows that the process is out of control mean there is a signable cost variation in the wheel diameter, we should investigate the cost of the our control of control point. Okay, so based on the control chart is wheel rim uh, wheel manufacturing process in control. Okay, we can see no points are outside of the control limits. It's indicating that the process is stable over time. Okay, so notice that the points on this chart fall randomly above the center line with no points outside of the control limit. This indicates that the wheel rim diameters produced by the wheel manufacturing process are consistent over time. So any variation in the data values is inherent to the process. How can we get a better picture of this inherent variability? It's important to est estimate the true common cost variation in a process. So we can put limits on how much variation we should see in the country chart. These limits are e the upper and lower control limits on the country chart. To see common cost variation in the process, we need data that are, are free from unusual sources of variation as possible. This can be accomplished by collecting subsets of data under conditions that are as similar as possible. We call these rational subgroups because they limit variability to the inherent variation in the process. To collect rational uh, subgroups at the car wheel manufacturing, uh, car wheel, uh, that we sample subsets of wheels that have been manufactured using the same batch of raw material. If these tuples are collected properly, they contain, contain only variation that is natural occurring in the process. By identifying the common cause variation, we are better able to spot the presence of something unusual in the process. Keep in mind that with any country chart, even if process is stable, it may still not do what it's supposed to be doing. In other words, a process may be in statistical control but may not be meeting specifications. In the <coughs> capability chapter, we will learn how to conduct a capability analysis to determine if a process is meeting specification. As review, so a contract chart is a graphical representation of a process over time. 
it helps us identify assignable cost variation in a process. To use control charts, we collect relational subgroups of uh, which limit variability to the common cost variation in the process. Many control charts are available for process monitoring. In later lessons, we'll learn about how to choose the right control chart for our data and for the quality characteristic of interest. Okay, so, but first, let's learn about the pattern in contract charts. Thank you for your listening. So, in next lesson, we'll talk about the patterns in contract charts.